In this video, I'm going to take you on a tour of the beautiful Marilla Explorer. I'm going to show you around and provide some of my hints and tips. And I'm going to start at the very front of the ship on deck 15 and the adult only veranda. This is a very peaceful and relaxing area at the very front of the ship, with a variety of sun lounges and chairs. And this area is a bit of a hidden gem, it's not shown on any of the online deck plans. And the veranda continues down on deck 14. And just for a little bit of background, the Miranda Explorer used to be the Celebrity Galaxy, which was the subject of the BBC documentary The Cruise and launched the career of Jay McDonald. And yes, I did go back and watch a couple of those old episodes just to see what the ship looked like back in the 90s. But back to the tour. Up here you get great views of other open decks and the Lido. And as you bend round you see this duck. And also deck 14 wraps around the rear of the ship, which has views over the sports area and the aft of the ship. And Marilla cruises are a little bit different to most other cruise lines. Firstly, all five ships in their fleet used to be owned by Royal Caribbean International. Two of them were actually Royal Caribbean ships and three were celebrity ships. I'll just break here to show you that this is the entrance to the hideout. It's from 12 to 17 year olds. I'm neither of those ages, so we'll just move on did hear from parents on board that their kids absolutely loved it. Marella Cruises are operated by TUI UK, which was formed by a series of mergers and acquisitions by the German TUI Group and familiar UK high street names such as Thompson, Thomas Cook and First Choice. But what makes Marella really stick out from the crowd is that all of its cruises really are all inclusive. And as Marella don't sell out the UK, your flights, transfers, accommodation on board the ship, food and where the difference really hits, your drinks and your tips are also included. If you don't want to spend a penny more than the cost from getting from your house to the airport, you don't have to. And just so you're aware, the drinks package offers a wide range of drinks for all tastes. And while of course there are speciality dining and speciality drinks that you can pay for, I don't think there's any need for you to do that unless you really want to. In a future video, I'll provide a breakdown of how much I've spent on this cruise, but in summary, it wasn't a lot more than the cruise fare. And as I turn the corner to see the beautiful Mediterranean sun, it's time to go down another deck. Deck 12 is a mix of outdoor space, indoor venues and cabins. Feeling energetic, there's a jogging track, and if you're not, there are plenty of lounges to soak in the sun. But while this area was really popular on my sailing, you could always find a lounger if you wanted one. Now I'm heading into my favourite late night spot on the ship, Indigo. As it's at the very front of the ship with lots of windows, it was a great place to come during the day to have a more relaxed drink. And there was ample seating available too. The bar had a great selection of drinks including speciality and sharing cocktails. And I'd just like to make a special shout out to the amazing staff, who were both welcoming and friendly every time we went to Indigo. Now I'm going to be honest, if you're a huge casino fan then Morella probably isn't going to be the cruise line for you. Four table games, a handful of slot machines and that was about it. But I can't really blame them. Every time that I went past, there was barely anybody there. And the final part of Indigo is the club. Which is a very popular venue until the early hours of the morning. Dance classes during the day for those people wishing to learn some new moves. 
and after leaving Indigo, I'm going outside and heading towards the rear of the ship. And try my best not to get knocked over by the joggers. And there's also a bar up here called The Shack, which is a great place to go and get a frozen cocktail. And also on deck 12 was my cabin. I'll leave a link to the full cabin tour here. And outside of the back of the ship is this very small mini golf area. And this area is known as the family deck. There's some seating here so you can soak in those after the ship views. And this is the sports court area for those wishing to play basketball or five-a-side football. I'm now at the centre of the ship heading down to deck 11, the Lido deck. And the first thing I see here is the extremely popular Snack Shack. If you're looking for something to graze quick and easy, then this is the place to come. Hot items here include hot dogs, burgers and fish and chips. You can also grab those all important teas and coffees. And if you're looking for something to grab and go, this is the grab and go section. It's like the clue is in the name. Here you'll find a selection of sandwiches, salads and desserts. And I used to take a couple of items to put in the fridge in my cabin, just in case I was feeling a little bit peckish later on. And there are plenty of seats and sun lounges around the two main pools. And over to the side are these really colourful cabanas. Each of them are named after a popular port. And these clips are a great idea to make sure the towel stays on the sunbed. And tucked away in the corner is Scoops, which is a great place to go and get ice creams and frozen sundaes. But please note there is a small upcharge should you wish to get anything from here. And once you've got your ice cream, you can choose to sit in one of these colourful deck chairs or on one of these unicycle stools. And on the other side of the ship is the all-important Paul Bar, which serves a wide selection of beer, wine and cocktails to drink while you chill out by the pool. Heading inside again and to Ocean's Gym. which has a decent selection of cardio and weight equipment. And just to point out, the gym isn't that big and does tend to get busy, especially in the mornings. Opposite this is Ocean Spa. The spa offers a variety of massage and body treatments in its 13 rooms. I've never actually been for a massage myself, although it is something I would like to try. If you have, please let me know what it was like in the comments below because I am very tempted. There's also a thermal suite and a salon. Heading back out onto the pool deck on the left hand side are three whirlpool, which turned out to be really popular. Something else that was really popular are the sun lounges by the pool. If you want to grab one of those, you're going to have to get there early. Overall, I thought that this was a good sized pool deck for the size of the ship. And even during the hottest part of the day, you could always find somewhere to sit.
And now it's time to head back inside and to the Marketplace Buffet. There's also been a bit of a time change because I'm recording this around nine o'clock in the morning. I wanted to show you what it was like for the all important breakfast. Those of you who have watched some of my previous ship tours, you know I'm quite particular about the buffet. First up is the muesli and the cereal. Followed by yogurt and the parfaits. And now onto the cooked breakfast. With firstly some scrambled eggs, bacon, sausages, and beans. Next up was a heart attack special, fried bread. I don't think I've seen that anywhere in years. And here we have cooked tomatoes, black pudding, and boiled eggs. And then there's some fried eggs, pancakes, and toast. There was also a choice of bread, followed by salami and ham, and slices of cheddar and gouda. And also some oranges and apples. And if you like some pastries for breakfast, well, there's a good choice of those too. There was an area for some healthy choices, although they did really consist of, well, fruit. The best thing for breakfast for me, however, was the omelette station, where you can choose the ingredients that go into your omelette. The omelette is then freshly made and you're given a buzzer to return when the food's cooked. Over at the drink station, there's a selection of fruit juices along with the usual teas and coffees. There's also a dedicated area for kids' food, which I thought was a really nice touch. And the buffet also has a gluten-free area. The marketplace is open for breakfast, lunch, afternoon tea and for dinner. The buffet on board the Morello Explorer comes highly recommended. There's plenty of variety, the selections are regularly refreshed by the ample staff and there's lots of seating. Some other cruise lines should take note of all of this. And at the rear of Deck 11 is the Mediterranean, which consists of a bar, an indoor and outdoor seating area, and two restaurants. On the left hand side is a Mediterranean Italian restaurant, where you get to choose your pasta, your sauces, and your extras for your own unique dish. Or you can go along and grab slices of margarita, pepperoni, or the pizza of the day. On the opposite side of the room is the Mediterranean tapas. Although to be fair, I think it was more like a deli than a tapas. There's a choice of desserts, sandwiches and wraps. And the panini of the day. And then there's this salad bar, followed by the hot food choices. We can get Lancashire hot pot, or maybe a baked potato with a selection of toppings. It was definitely a great spot if you wanted to grab something quick and tasty. And the highlight here was the amazing paella. And at the very rear of the ship was the Mediterranean Terrace Bar, which is a more relaxing, quieter area than the hustle and bustle of the main pool. In the evenings, this area does go through a bit of a change. The Mediterranean Tapas is going to become a full service menu in the evenings, so if you want to eat here, you really need to book early in your cruise. and the Mediterranean pizza and pasta also becomes a full service restaurant. Reservations aren't available for this restaurant, so if it's busy, you'll be given a buzzer and when it goes off, it'll be your time to return. While you can still create your own pasta dish, you can also create your own pizza. Decks 10 and 9 are gonna be where most of the cabins on the ship are. And it's so weird to see these ashtrays at regular intervals. And there are also these chilled water dispensers on each passenger deck. The Morella Kids Club is at the rear of the ship on deck nine. And there are two clubs, one for six months to three year olds and one from three year olds to 11 year olds. And there's a small splash pool outside for the kids club. 
When I spoke to parents, they said that their kids absolutely love spending time in the kids club. Another area that was popular with kids was on deck eight and the gamer zone. Although you did see a few adults playing the games later in the evenings. And next door was this small chill out area, which offered great views of the ship's atrium. And finally on deck eight is the attic, which had a selection of board games and books. In the middle of deck seven is the Broad Street Shops. There's plenty of choice here from clothing, accessories, fragrances, and even memorabilia. And of course, there's a shop selling Morella merchandise from the usual hats and t-shirt to bags and cups. Morella also have a range of their own sweets. And at the very front of the ship is the 1000 seat capacity Broadway Show Lounge, which is spread over decks seven and six. Here you'll see West End style shows and guest entertainers. As you enter into the theatre, you'll be offered a choice of alcoholic or non-alcoholic drink. And the captain made an appearance in the theatre to introduce to the passengers his senior team. The shows here were high quality and in fact, some of the best I've seen on any cruise ship. Once outside the theatre, there are even more shops. And the focus of the shops on this side were watches and bags. And please be aware that the shops are closed when the ship is in port. Heading towards the rear of the ship on deck seven, you pass some seating to get to Aperitif, which is a champagne and Prosecco bar perfectly situated for a pre-dinner drink. And next to this is two of the speciality dining restaurants aboard the ship. There's the Surf and Turf Steakhouse and the Pan-Asian Cora La. Both restaurants are really popular, so if you want to dine here, make sure you book in advance. I really like the menu for Corolla, so we decided to eat here on our second sea day. You get to choose which meat, how you'd like your curry to be prepared, and how hot you'd like it to be. This was a great dining experience in a relaxed atmosphere with really helpful staff. I'm going to now walk through this next seated area towards the Squid and Anchor. Come back to this area shortly. I'd say that the Squid and Anchor is the most popular venue on board the ship. This is Morella's version of a typical British pub. It always seemed to be a lot going on in here, even if it was just the band rehearsing for tonight's performance. And there are two bars in here. This is the main one serving beer, wine and cocktails. And over in the corner, there's a much smaller bar. This serves speciality gins and whiskies. And if you'd like to have a seat to enjoy the quizzes, the bingo or the live entertainment, I suggest you get in here at least an hour before it starts.
and outside the squid and anchor at the aft of the ship is the smoking area. Heading back into the ship and through the squid and anchor you get to the Umi Sushi Bar. This is another speciality dining option, although whenever I walked past it was really busy. There's some outside space on deck 7 which is part of the promenade. The promenade on this ship actually splits over two levels, which is something I haven't seen on any other ship I've been on. It's quite thin on this deck, but as you drop down to deck 6, it becomes much wider. To the width, you can play shuffleboard or make use of one of the many sun lounges. As I walk here, I'd like to say that despite the ship being from the mid-1990s, the high level of maintenance I saw meant that it felt much more modern. I'm now back inside the ship and on deck 6, and as you can see, there's even more seating. Which I felt was really useful, especially on days when the weather wasn't that great outside. This is the lounge, which is a popular bar for pre-dinner drinks if you're heading into the main dining room. And at the rear of the ship is the main dining room. This entrance wasn't always open, so sometimes you'd have to drop down to deck five to get into the restaurant. This is bar 53, a great place for a pre-meal drink. This is the main dining room, which is split into two areas. The majority of the restaurant is called Latitude 53 which is a traditional which is a traditional cruise ship main dining room serving breakfast, lunch and dinner. This area of the restaurant in the evenings becomes Vista, which is a contemporary Italian restaurant. And while the vast majority of the food in this restaurant is complimentary, there's one dish that comes with a small supplement, which is this Parpadelli carbonara, which is hand tossed table side in a parmesan cheese wheel. Got to say, it was absolutely delicious. Breakfast here is highly recommended. It's obviously a far more relaxed affair than going to the buffet. There's a wide range of food options and the service here is excellent. And there's always choice of vegan, vegetarian and gluten-free options. I've now walked up the stairs and back onto deck six and heading out of the main dining room and towards the lounge. and heading back through the lounge again, you can see the unique hot pink piano. And of course, there's going to be live music throughout the evening. And surrounding the atrium is the very popular coffee port. The coffee port offers specialty coffees, teas and hot chocolate, along with other drinks. They also serve macrons, cookies, brownies and pralines, all at an extra cost. I do have to say that the truffles and pralines looked really amazing. Also here is a map that shows all of the ports the ship will be going to. On the left is the cruise holiday store where you can book your next Morella cruise at a discount. And on the right is the photo studio where the ship's photographers can take your portraits. And there's also a cinema on board showing a selection of films. And here's something you rarely see on a cruise ship and that's an escalator. And this is the photo kiosk and gallery where you can view the photographs you've had taken on board the ship and purchase the ones you like. And at the front of the ship is the lower entrance to the Broadway show lounge. I'm now walking past the coffee port seating area 
before heading down the main atrium stairs to deck five. Should you have any queries while on board the ship, reception is on deck five. Destination Services is also here. And this is the place to come if you're looking to book any excursions while in port. And the final speciality restaurant is the Dining Club, which is the ship's fine dining restaurant. I didn't try for dinner, but I did go for the great musical afternoon tea. I don't want to ruin the surprise, so all I'll say is, is that the food was excellent, and if you want to go here, please make sure you book early, as it really was well worth it. And deck four has the place on the ship you really don't want to go to, and that's the medical center. But if you do have any health issues while on board, this is the place to come. Many thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on.